Peace, everybody. You're speaking easy with the coach. And this is new. Welcome to Coach's Crate Chronicles. It's a little dark here because I'm not directly under the light. But Crate Chronicling, Big Daddy Canes. It's a Big Daddy thing. Got the idea because I was um, looking at an album and I thought like, you know, to talk about the album, I'm always talking about the live shows I've been a part of in the past. And I'm at, I was like, damn, I'm running short on some of those things, on some of those shows, some of those events. And when I'm, I'm standing over here, because I'm standing by some of the crates here on the floor. I mean, I got crates all over this place. So I thought to myself, given all these crates and all this music, all this hip hop, you know, I can chronicle some of these things because it's just so interesting. You know, people don't generally buy albums like they once did. And then I'm walking here and I'm standing under the light. This is good. Then I'm going to walk back to that. I noticed that. Anyway, my point is this, that this particular album, it's a Big Daddy thing. Big Daddy Kane dropped his first album. And... Um, Long Live the Cane, everybody, it's a classic. To me, this is easily his best album. It's not even close. And this particular song I got going, um, another victory produced by Easy Mo B. I remember, I mean, I heard Smooth Operator and it was okay. It was cool. It actually was very cool. But when I heard this song, it was like, this is the one, man. It, this Cane is killing it. Produced by Easy Mo B once again. And one thing that got a lot of us is that this album was not largely produced by Marley Maul. Marley Maul did one track. And I, you know, I'm not getting on Marley Maul, but this album, to me, again, this is far and large his best album. Like, he had other albums that were cool. This is the one. Now, in chronicling the album, because again, this is Coach's Crate Chronicles, when I go track for track, um, you know, side one was hitting song after song. The first song, I ain't gonna lie, the, the Prince Paul work, I was, you know, at one point I said Prince Paul was a man, but on this album, he had two tracks and it was eh. So I would have omitted a lot of the Prince Paul, you know, whatever he had on this album, I would have omitted it, me, myself. But I think De La Soul was kicking at the time, so Kane had to make sure he had that placement. Anything Kane produced, it was it was hitting for the most part. He, you know, remember when he did the uh, Long Live the Kane album, he said he actually produced, or at least he composed with samples and beats. And um, Marley came in and finished it. And they all, so, so I hear all of the Juice Crew, they had the ideas, and Marley is the one that had the equipment, so he got producer credits. But uh, I'm looking at the whole side one. It was hitting for me. This song to, um, I'm going to skip ahead to my next favorite song. Oh my God. Young Gifted in Black. After another victory, Young Gifted in Black. Maybe the best, I think it's the best song on this album. It might be the best song Big Daddy Kane may have done. At least it's top five, at very minimal. It's top five. This song is ridiculous. With the BB King sample, that ridiculous. This is the one that Marley Maul did. Break beat, but whatever. But I, you know, I took this. We go. To, I'm not gonna go to side two with Teddy Riley. I get the job done, which was cool. And it's funny when I look back at it now. I guess he paid Teddy Riley some money to give him that New Jack Swing sound, so he had to make sure to put a video out. And I was always like, that song was, it was whatever, but I get it. The, you know, the the money he put down on the track, he had to get some something out of it. So that was cool. Um, it went on, anything goes when it comes to whole, I ain't, Pimpin' Ain't Easy was a trip. It's funny how you look at Pimpin' Ain't Easy back in 89, 90, and you look at it now in 2022 and you come to realize it may be a little, you know, politically incorrect very much in a lot of areas, but 
a fun song, fun, silly song. You and your boys, you're immature, you listen to it. It was funny. Um, oh boy, the song he did to be a man with Blue Magic. Why? Why? It's like if you take off the Prince Paul songs, you take off the Be a Man, you take off the house that C built. I'm a New Jersey and I said take off the house to see built, but I'm gonna get back. You take off all those songs, and this album is like forever, ever, ever, ever. Everyone's favorite album, classic, yada yada. But at the time, Kane wanted to do to be a man with blue magic, and he it's like he wanted to be in the stylistics. He wanted to be that guy. At one point, it was almost like he wanted to be, I don't want to say RB. But when he said, you know, I want the back, when he was on Arsenio, he said, I want the backdrop that Quincy had. I don't want a graffiti backdrop. And I think he kind of lost sight when you don't want your graffiti backdrop. It's not hip hop. And he kind of lost sight of that. But um, I see what he was saying. I see what he was trying. I see he's saying, I'm trying to get in the mainstream. But in getting into the mainstream, I'm trying to, re trying to remain urban. I don't want to say he's trying to remain black, but he's trying to remain urban. So I get it. But that, and like I said, the house of sea built, hear me, from here in Newark, New Jersey. If you're a New Yorker, you never should have done a, a club song. Y'all, New Yorkers don't do club songs. They criticize it. And the whole world, and you go to Europe, you go to D.C., Chicago, everybody loves club music but New Yorkers. Okay. But they should have kept that. To be your man, I'm looking at the track listing right here. And like I said, the two Prince Paul joints, I wish they would have taken them off. But again, De La Soul was hit. Aside from that, this is Big Daddy Kane's best album. It's a Big Daddy thing, which originally was supposed to be titled The Mac is Back. I don't know, either one would have been back. This is just good, it doesn't matter. But I'm just chronicling. This great classic. You see, I got my dat tapes holding it up so it can be stained. We're going to talk about dat tapes another time. But again, just me speaking easy with the coach chronicling. It's a big daddy thing with Coach's Crate Chronicles. Y'all be easy. Peace.